Hello, so today we're going to be thinking about how to look after our solitary bees over autumn and winter. Hopefully by now your solitary bee box is full of mason bees and leaf cutter bees. But if you are lucky enough to have lots of bees in them, it's a really good idea to think about how we can protect them over winter to give them the best chance of survival for next year. You've got a few options based on the solitary bee house that you've bought. If your bee house is in a dry space that it can stay over winter, then you may only need to be protecting it from birds. Rain is the main problem for solitary bees. So if your box is dry, then all you'll need to do is put a cage over the front of it, some mesh that you may already have or you can get from a garden center, and you just secure a mesh square over the top and that keeps the birds away from your solitary bee box. If you're worried that your bee box may get wet over this winter, perhaps it's, there's not a sheltered spot or there isn't enough of an overhang on the roof to make sure that the bees are definitely gonna stay dry, then you may want to bring the whole box inside to a shed or a porch or a lobby, any area that's cold but is definitely gonna stay dry. Another option for things you can do to keep your solitary bees safe are you can open the bee box up and you can remove the cocoons and you can keep the cocoons separately over winter. The main things you're looking for when you open up the bee box are within the cassette there could be a few different insects that parasitize on the bees. So you'd be looking for any larvae that are not the bee larvae you could be looking for the parasitic wasp and the Houdini fly, which is the red fly. And the main way that you'd know that the Houdini fly has been in, which is the biggest problem for the mason bee, is that at the end, there'll be a very small pinprick in the mud. So we have some cocoons in here, as well as having some parasites. So. First of all, we're going to break away the mud at the end and it's a little bit stiff, but each cell is sealed off with some mud. So that needs to be broken away and we can then clean out any of the parasites. So you can see there's some larvae in there. But what we're trying to do is find out if the, the cocoons that are in here of the bees are healthy and well, because we want to take them out, clean them up and then put them in a safe environment. So we're looking to clean them and then put them on some kitchen paper in a plastic tray, and we're gonna keep them in the fridge over winter or in a porch or a garage or a shed if you've got somewhere that remains fairly cool and that's dry for the whole of winter. So we're going to gently break that bit of mud away from the cell next door and then we're going to see if we can just gently lift him out and we'll know if he's healthy in a minute or not. So there's some bee poo underneath. So that's perfectly normal, that's fine to find. And it's then a good idea to hold on to the cocoon in your fingertips and just brush away the poo. We then have the larvae which is, looks a little bit like a kidney bean. If you want to know what you're looking, what sort of thing you're looking for in your baby bee. And you can just pop those on a piece of dry kitchen paper in a plastic tray, and you're gonna keep those in the fridge until March. And then you're going to put them outside in the bottom of the bee box so that they can emerge or back into one of the tubes so that they can naturally emerge next spring.